Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Mayor's Monday message for August 3rd, 2020. I'm going to start off with some good events that we have coming up this weekend. We've got uh, First Friday coming up on Friday, and we have last month started a new event, African American First Friday, hosted by Call to Action Worldwide. And uh, they're supporting African American businesses, entertainment, uh, working together, uh, and that's at Penn Park from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m. on Friday. Also, we have the downtown First Friday events, and they are going on from 5 to 9 o'clock. And we'll have uh, some streets blocked off. We'll have some uh, ribbon cutting, some, some dining, in the, dining in the streets. And uh, so we hope that you'll come down and uh, spend some time with us at Penn Park and uh, in the downtown district. And please just remember to bring your masks and practice social distancing. We're still in the midst of this mess and uh, it's not going away unless we make it go away. And the only way we can make it go away is to continue social distancing and wearing our masks. So uh, the numbers uh, came down a little bit here towards the end of last week, uh, but you know, across the country, we had 40 states that are on the rise reporting, uh, I think 18 states reported record new levels of death, uh, over 155,000 people dead. So this isn't, this isn't gone. It's not something that we can wish away right now. It's just a, uh, a tragedy that we have to work through and we have to work together to try and minimize. So please stick with us. And uh, uh, particularly, you know, you're out in gatherings, sporting events, um, out in, in gatherings like First Friday or, or anything like that, uh, please. Uh, I said a couple weeks ago, you know, we've had some exposures here and uh, we're limiting now meetings to uh, to only the, the emergencies or things that can only be done in person. So please, if you want to get in touch with us, you can still reach out to us through yorkcity.org and most of the contact information for the different folks that you would want to meet with is right there on the first page. Just scroll down a little bit. Uh, but we are still meeting with people, but again, we're trying to limit that and uh, anything you can to do to uh, limit your exposures as well would be beneficial. We've got, uh, on Saturday, if you've got a bunch of documents piled up around your house, we can uh, take care of that. Or I should say, uh, Representative Carol Hill Evans is going to be sponsoring a shredding event right here at City Hall from 10 to 2. So if it's time to clean out those boxes, those closets, those desks, all the things that you're ready to get rid of, uh, you can bring them here to City Hall, 101 South George Street, and uh, get them shredded. And I think Carol Hill Evans will be here. So if you have any questions or comments for her, uh, it's a great time to catch up with our state representative. Getting a lot of calls, and I have to comment, uh, you know, we are working very hard on uh, trying to track down the dirt bikes. Uh, saw them running by. 50 miles an hour yesterday with little little babies on the sidewalks in the street. At any moment, a kid could walk out. Um, this is just so dangerous, running the red lights, everything. I know people want the police to do something about it, but here's some facts. If we chase the dirt bikes, first of all, the dirt bikes can get away pretty quickly because they can cut through grass and they can cut down other places. And uh, But... The worst part is that they're not following the laws. They're going through red light. So basically you have two eventualities of chasing the illegal dirt bike riders. And that is that they cause an accident and somebody else gets hurt or they get killed in an accident. And we've already had that here a few years ago. We know that. That doesn't mean there isn't something that you can do. What you can do is email and tell us where are these dirt bikes staying? If we can catch them where they are keeping them, so as they're pulling off the road so that we don't have to chase them, that's how we can catch them without endangering our citizens. So we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. If we chase them around, somebody's going to get really, really hurt. So uh, if we don't chase them around, they're causing all sorts of chaos in the city and in endangering people. But there is a plan in place. So please email dirtbikeinfo at yorkcity.org. And not, not just when you randomly see them. I mean, maybe if you see them every day coming out of a certain alley or something like that. But seeing them on the streets doesn't really help us a lot. I mean, I see them on the streets 
I try to follow them when I can and try to see where they're coming from or where they're going to. That's how we can actually catch them. And for those that don't know, these things are illegal. The dirt bikes are illegal. The little bicycles with the gas-powered engines are illegal. Doing wheelies on regular bikes in the middle of traffic is illegal. If you're letting your kids do that stuff, you're not helping them. So you're not helping them and you're certainly not helping your city. So please, parents, cousins, grandparents, whatever, speak some wisdom into these kids because I know they're, they see it on YouTube. Uh, they see it coming out of Baltimore and Philly and DC. I see it when I'm at these other places. You know, Route 95 is crazy with motorcycles doing wheelies straight down 95. It's insane. Um, and you know, what was it? Sunday night? No. Thursday night, I almost hit two kids just rolling down, no lights, just cutting straight across King Street. And, uh, you know, none of us want that. So any info you can give us on where these bikes are being stashed so that we can catch them in the act, so to speak, uh, dirt bike info at yorkcity.org. So it's one of these weeks where I've got to be very solemn and, and talk about the, the horrible tragedies going on in our city. This was a particularly rough one. I uh, want to send my condolences to the families of uh, Q, Quentin Jacobs, and also uh, to uh, Kyle Hagenbusch, who is actually from Allentown, but he was down here and just shot for no reason. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I titled this, you know, I keep just a couple little notes here to remind me of what I want to say, and I titled this Keeping the Peace. Um, this, I now have to plan for the ripple effects and have to try and talk to people and try to talk people out of hunting down these killers themselves and talk them into letting the police do their jobs and, and begging people to give us information instead of just letting the streets take care of it and having more murders that turn into more murders and more murders. Um, the, the retribution is what keeps these cycles going. And, uh, um, you know, certainly a new cycle, at least one, if not two new cycles of violence were, were potentially created here uh, this week. And, um, you know, now I'm pretty pessimistic about, about what, what might happen next. And, and it hurts me because we're trying so hard with the uh, group violence intervention, with the uh, juvenile violence intervention, with reaching out to families and helping them through our uh, community and police response to the victims of violence. We've put in all these new programs all these new ways to try and reach out to people and help them uh, and um, not seeing the results that we want. You know, we were off to a good year, actually, um, as far as, as the number of murders in the city. And, you know, the last week, just the last couple of weeks, just really undid all of that. Um, you know, there are some other things. We are trying to work with, with new economic development projects, trying to bring jobs. Things are going to get hotter because of the COVID. Unemployment is up. And even if it's not, um, even if it's not because of the COVID, if it's not because of money, just the general pressure on everybody is really up right now. So... I need the peacekeepers to be out here and talk and think about what they're saying themselves because sometimes even as a peacekeeper it's easy to get heated, it's easy to say something that is going to be taken the wrong way and taken as aggression, but right now people are on edge. This generation, I'm going to say almost you know, certainly in the last 50 years, nobody has had to deal with the kind of stress that we are under uh, as, a, as a whole community where 
everyone is affected all around, and you don't know how other people are being affected. You don't know what 10 things happened to them earlier in the day or earlier in the week. So people are under a lot of pressure right now, and I would ask that people find that peacekeeper inside of them and think about what you can do to reduce the tensions in our community. Because there's no doubt that the tensions are high right now. Our unemployment rate has gone from 7% to over 20%. So lots of folks without jobs. We're trying to get restaurants back open. We're trying to get this COVID out of our community so that we can get back to some kind of normal. But it's not happening yet. And that creates a lot, a lot, a lot of stress. So please, my peacekeepers out there, my pastors, my leaders in the community, uh, let's work together and let's sow the seeds of peace throughout our community so we don't continue to reap the, the death and the, the negative, the violence uh, that we're seeing right now. So let's stick together. We got work to do. We're getting hit on all sides. We're getting hit on the economy. We're getting hit with the virus. Um, we're getting hit with the violence. So it's time that we need to work together. Uh, I know a lot of us have been, but we need to redouble our commitment right now and redouble our commitment in our daily lives to try and bring peace into every conversation that we have. So I hope you'll stick with us on this and good stuff around in the city this week. As long as you're safe, as long as you're wearing that mask and keeping distance, I hope to see you in the city of York. Thank you. Have a good week.